we're going to do some more primality tests today. Here's today's theme. When the conclusion fails, we get a primality test. What we're looking for are statements like this. If P is prime, then something easy to check. And the idea is that if the something easy to check fails for some reason, then we know that P is not prime. Now, we would have been even happier if we had an if and only if, if we had a criterion that allowed us to exactly identify the primes. But we're going to be happy enough with these uh, primality tests that go by looking for these failing conclusions. Now, we've already seen for Maslow theorem, we've already even used it for primality testing, but let's just review it here. So what does Fermat's theorem say? Well, let's suppose that A is not zero modulo P. Then Fermat's theorem tells us that when P is prime, A to the P minus one is congruent to one modulo P. So if it happens that A to the P minus one for some P isn't congruent to one modulo P, then that would tell us that P is not prime. Now we know that the number 341 isn't prime. 341, we know that. We know it's 11 times 31. But could we have used the Fermat primality test to detect the fact that 341 isn't prime? Well, let's compute 2 to the 340th power, modulo 341, and see what we get. Now, we can use the Chinese remainder theorem because we know that 341 isn't prime, and we can just compute the answer modulo 11 and modulo 31. Okay, so let's compute 2 to the 340th power, modulo 11. Well, 2 to the 340th power, that's 2 to the 10th power to the 34th power. And 2 to the 10th power modulo 11 by Fermat's law theorem is 1. And that means that 2 to the 340th power is 1 modulo 11. What about 2 to the 340th power modulo 31? Well, we can use the fact that 2 to the 340th power is 2 to the 10th times 2 to the 30th to the 11th power. And we know that 2 to the 30th power is 1 modulo 31. So 2 to the 340th power modulo 31 is exactly the same thing as 2 to the 10th power modulo 31. Now, what's 2 to the 10th mod 31? We can do this whole calculation without using the infernal computers at all. So 2 to the 10th is 2 to the 6th times 2 to the 4th, and 2 to the 6th is 64, and 64 mod 31 is 2. So 2 to the 10th is 2 times 16, but 2 times 16 is 32. 32 is 1 mod 31. So 2 to the 340th power is congruent to 1 modulo 341. And what that means is that the Fermat primality test wouldn't have detected the fact that 341 is composite if we use base 2. Now, we could try this with other bases, but what we'd really like is a more robust primality test. So here's that more robust primality test. Just as our previous primality test was based on Fermat's little theorem, a statement of the form, if P is prime, then blah, blah, blah. Well, here's another statement of that same shape. If P is prime, then... How many solutions are there to x squared equals 1 in up? Well, there's two solutions to x squared equals 1 in up. Now, let's use this statement to build a primality test. So p is the number that we're trying to test. We might as well suppose that p is bigger than 2 and odd because, you know, if it's a large even number, we're pretty sure it's composite. So p is bigger than 2 and it's odd. That means that p minus 1 is even. So we can write p minus 1 as some power of 2, 2 to the s, times d, the odd part of p minus 1. Now, if p is prime, then a to the p minus 1, that's a to the 2 to the s times d, that must be 1 modulo p. That's just what Fermat's little theorem tells us. Now, let's do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. a to the 2 to the s minus 1 d, all of that squared, that's exactly the same thing as a to the 2 to the s d. That's a to the p minus 1. That's 1 by Fermat's little theorem. But this means that by reducing the exponent on 2, by, by thinking about a to the 2 to the s minus 1 d, what we've actually written down is a square root of 1. And we know that if p is prime, there's only two square roots of 1, 1 and minus 1. Now, let's think about those two possibilities. If we got minus 1, we're just done. But if we got a 1, then we can note that a to the 2 to the s minus 1 d, that's the same shape as a to the 2 to the s times d. So we can repeat this process. Now, if a to the 2 to the s minus 1 times d, if that's 1, then we can reduce the power on the 2. We can think about a to the 2 to the s minus 2 times d. That number squares to 1. And consequently, if p is prime, the only square roots are plus or minus 1. So that means the only possibilities for a to the 2 to the s minus 2 times d is either 1 or minus 1. Now, if we get minus 1, we're just done. But if a to the 2 to the s minus 2 times d is 1, then we can repeat the process again. Now, we can't repeat this process indefinitely. Eventually, we run out of twos. But what happens at the end? 
Well, we might end by finding that a to the d is congruent to one modulo p. That's a situation where we just ran out of twos. Or as we keep finding these square roots of one, we'll eventually land on minus one. So we'll find an r, r between zero and s minus one inclusive. We'll find this r so that a to the two to the r times d is congruent to minus one mod p. Now, how are we using this as a primality test? Well, if p is prime, then those things happen. So if those things don't happen, then p must not be prime. And in fact, what we will have uncovered is another solution to x squared equals one in up. We weren't able to check that 341 was composite by using the Fermat primality test. I mean, it just happens that two to the 340th power is one mod 341. But let's see if we can use this more refined test to verify that 341 is composite. So we first wanna find the odd part of 340. So 340 is four times 85. And we use the same base, a equals two. Now two to the four times 85, two to the 340th power, that, that is one. And the same thing is true of two to the two times 85, that's also one. But two to the 85th power is 32 modulo 341. Now 32 squared is one mod 341, but 32 is not plus or minus one. And consequently 341 cannot be prime. Sometimes people will act as if there's just no structure whatsoever to the prime numbers. They're just distributed randomly. But in fact, there is a lot of structure. And one way to feel about this test is that it's revealing some of that structure to us. For the prime numbers that are below 2047, you can exactly identify them just by checking a equals two with this test. If you use a equals two and a equals three, then you can identify all the prime numbers up to 1,373,653. If you just use two, three, and five, you can identify all the prime numbers up to 25,326,001. And if you use two, three, five, seven, and 11, you can identify all the prime numbers exactly up to 2,152,302,898,747. That would be nice if there was some slick proof of these facts. These are just experimentally observed facts, but it's useful. I mean, if you're ever stuck on a desert island and you need to know the primality of some number, you don't have to bring some enormous table with you. All you need to do is perform this check for some relatively small choices of A. So here you are, you're on this deserted island and it's vitally important for your survival that you determine whether or not two to the 30th plus three is prime. You've got nothing with you, no calculators, nothing to help you except for your wits and the memory that it's enough to check A equals two, three, five, seven, and 11. And if a number passes the test for those bases, then it's prime. And if it fails, then it's not prime. That's all you have to check because this number is, is small enough. Now, what do you have to do? Well, you take a look at two to the 30th plus three minus one. That number factors is two times enormous odd number, two to the 29th plus one, that's D. So in this case, after a tremendous amount of computation, you compute two to the D, three to the D, five to the D, seven to the D, 11 to the D, and in every single case, you get the answer minus one modulo two to the 30th plus three. And consequently, you conclude that that number is prime. Now you might feel this is cheating. And I mean, it really is, because how do we know that just checking two, three, five, seven, and 11 is enough for numbers below two to the 40th? But I think it's a fun example of a primality test.